Today's episode is brought to you by the letter G and the number 10. Today we're talking grips, so stick around friends, it's going to be fun. We've noticed a large percentage of our viewers have not subscribed, so if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Thanks for joining us again today at the Mystery Range. My name's Ed Thorell from Shoot of the Series, and today we want to spend a few minutes talking about the evolution of grips. But first I want to thank our subscribers for giving us good traction, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button along with the like and the share. So, like I said, today we're going to talk a little bit about the evolution of grips. And when we first started to get our first types of grips, um, wood was the standard. Now, wood grips are great, and when this gun came out, the checkering was nice and sharp. You could get a good solid grip on it, but these grips are about 40 years old. So some of that checkering is worn down, and it's not as uh, rough and aggressive as it used to be to, to give you the maximum effect of getting a good grip. Later on, you also see rubberized grips come onto the market. And rubberized grips are great because they give you some shock absorption. They give you a good solid grip, and uh, they're comfortable to shoot. But the latest type of grip that we're seeing on the market is what's known as G10. And G10 is a, uh, a composite material, very similar to fiberglass, except that the layers of cloth are much, much thinner. And they're put together with very high pressure so that you end up with a material that is resistant to chemicals and oils doesn't absorb water and can last for a very, very long time and keep the texture of the grips. And we'd like to thank our friends at Lock Grips for sending us three different models. And what we're gonna be doing is going through a range of tests with different calibers, including 22s, 9s, and 45s to do kind of a before and after. We're going to start off with the standard rubberized grips that are on them and then switch them out and use the G10s to see if we can see a discernible difference in control and talk more about the advantages of G10 as well as the limitations. So stick around. We're going to spend quite a bit of time doing live fire and uh, it's going to be fun. We're back, and we're gonna start off today's uh, show and test with the Browning Buckmark Camper. And this comes with just some standard rubberized grips, which I'm a fan of. Anybody who's paying attention knows I like rubberized grips, but I'm not married to one idea. And if uh, I like the G10s better, well, the G10s might be the go-to. So anyway, we're gonna put five rounds down range. Range is hot. All right, we're safe and clear. We'll come back with the G10s. All right, well, we're back with lock grips, and this particular model is known as the Velos. It's a really cool looking gray and black composite that's got a pretty aggressive grip to it, and it feels really good in my hands. So let's run some rounds through it and, and see if uh, recoil makes a difference with the G10s. All right, we're live. Nice. I really like that. It's a nice surprise. I, I like the rubberized grips, but I really like the extra traction and the positive grip I get from the, the grips of the, v, the Velos lock grips. Um, I felt very little movement in my hands, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with these. Uh, stick around. We're going to get into our next evolution uh, with the 9mm. All right. Next up, we're going to be shooting the CZ D model, also known as the PCR, and these come stock out of the box uh, with uh, hard rubberized grips. The 
The CZ is already really well known for recoil management because of its design and having a very low bore axis. So the CZ has already got a great reputation for being easy to handle. We'll be right back and we're going to do the same thing with the Lock G10 grips. All right, next up, these are the Lock grips known as the Matrix grip. And these are also provided by Lock. Um, these have got what I would call an, an intermediate, um, kind of a medium grit when it comes to aggressiveness when it comes to the texture. I really like them though. And you can also get different colored liners that go underneath the grips. I think this looks really attractive with the um, flat dark earth uh, gr uh, grips and just a little bit of an orange highlight. Pretty attractive. CZ makes a great pistol. Just about perfect out of the box. Okay. All right, that's five. Um, the Matrix grips, I do like them. I think I'd like something just a little bit more aggressive. Um, it's not that I felt them sliding around much, but I just think that to get the most out of the G10 grips, you're going to get the best recoil management and control and keep it on target better with a more aggressive grip. All right, for our next evolution, I'll be back in just a couple of minutes or less with a, uh, a Rock Island Armory 1911 and 45 ACP. Next up is the Rock Island Officer's Model 1911. And I've been running Pack Myers uh, rubberized grips for a long time. Um, and I like them. Just like before, we'll put five rounds downrange just to get a baseline. All right. Let me go put the uh, G10s on. I'll be right back. All right, we're back with the G10s on the Rock Island Armory and I put these on and they fit like a glove. Worth pointing out, these are the lock op grips. They have dimples right here where my fingers meet on the gun. They're almost like small dimples like you would have on a golf ball. And then the um, contours here are almost on a diagonal. So these are really good, it seems to me, for um, just on first impression, locking in this fatty part of my palm to give me the most amount of control. But hey, talk's cheap. Let's check it out. All right, range is hot. We're good to go. Kind of sad. I was just getting into that. Anyway, I'll tell you what, um, I've been a big fan of rubber for many, many years, and today was a game changer for me. So um, I can't say enough good things about the lock grips. I, I think the best benefits are going to be paid to experienced shooters that really know how to have a strong grip where you're going to have about 20% in your shooting hand and about 80% in your uh, uh, support hand. Because to make the most of these grip, to make sure they don't move around in your hands, you've got to have a good, steady, strong grip on them. Uh, most recreational shooters are going to exert about 80 pounds pressure on the grip. Uh, the reason why so many competitors like this is they're going to double that amount, almost 160 pounds pressure. So uh, um, competitors using a very aggressive grip are going to be able to have a rock solid grip for controllability and speed 
as they work through their various stages. And I can't say enough good things about the lock grips. Um, they're fantastic. If uh, you guys at Lock Grips want them back, well, this gun's gonna be lost in a tragic boating accident, and if it's not, you'll have to pry it from my cold, dead hands. But we're not done. Be right back. I felt a little ripped off only shooting five rounds out of this, and I feel like I was just getting warmed up. So, um, this is for me. Let's let freedom ring. Freedom has a ring to it and a little bit of recoil, but not nearly as much with the lock grips. So to our friends out at lock, thanks again. We really appreciate it. You're not getting these back. So I'm Ed Thorell from Shooter the Series. We'd like to thank everybody for watching. Y'all take care.